everybody and welcome to a horror filled episode of Shock and Not Toy Reviews. Two, sometimes three idiots, a camera and a review. I'm the Berg. I'm Topher. Tonight we're reviewing Three Zeros, Horror Movie, Heritage, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, Pinhead, as you can tell by Wilson's favorite box of all time, the Lament Configuration. Dun, 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 dun. Wilson has been taken to hell for a while because he's got ants. <laughs> and uh, we will carry forward and trudge on with another buyer's remorse filled episode of Shock and Awe. So here he is, uh, Three Zero, as you all know, is the company that makes toys that I love that I then break or break in the package. And for some reason, I pre ordered another one, and here he is in all his pinhead glory. So we'll start off with the paint, looking at his head. It is a great, great paint job. The eyes especially look really, really well. The teeth look great. There's a blue hue to the makeup and even where the intersections of all the little cuts on his head, there's some nice flush tones in there. It's all really, really well done. It's, it's amazing. It looks to me like they had some sort of layered paint technique because if you look close, you can see different colors underneath the white on the outside, and it's pretty amazing. The wounds look, I don't know, kind of festering almost. If you look down into the wound, you can see that the wound is darker at the bottom than it is coming out. The gloss red, uh, where his flesh is stripped away on his chest, looks great. So yeah, and even like on his belly, where you can see his... Uh whatever you want to call his piercing, where the rope goes through, it just looks almost as good as a hot toy, if not as good as a hot toy, who are the, in my opinion, the kings of the 1-6 scale paint and sculpt for that matter most of the time. So I think they really, really knocked it out of the park. I have many pinhead collectibles. I'm kind of a pinhead nut, and this is by far the best paint job out of any of them that I have. And leading right into it, it's the head especially is one of the for sure best pinhead sculpts I have. Uh, I think it's, it's important to let everybody who's watching know that yes, in fact, those are actual metal pins. Yes. That his head is covered with actual metal pins. It's yep. extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, and I, there's really no other way that you can achieve that look and have it be that good except to use actual metal pins. And yeah, there they are. I don't even know how many are on his head. A lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, there's also some tiny little metal hooks uh, that pierce into his wounds and connect to his clothing. Yes. And I mean, just these tiny little metal details all over. And I will point out that they're not all perfect, just like in the movies, like whether they're supposed to be, and I'm sure you could bend them. Okay, I was going to ask if you had tried to adjust any of them. I though. have not tried to, but moving the head is the one part I'm like just... Based on my experience working with metal, I would imagine that you could probably, if you had some nice little long nose pliers, get in there and tweak them if you wanted to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but as you pointed out, in the movie, they're not. Yeah. What, do you, just sort what of... do you mean by perfect? I'm sorry. You mean they're not all even? Well, yeah, if you or look close, you can occasionally find one that's bent over a little bit further. Oh, okay. um, the, the placement in the rows is really the nice because is the perfect. head is laid out in this wound grid yes. pattern, and they're all right at the intersection point. So the placement is good, but a few of them are bent this way or that, you know. They're, so they're, a little, a little not, bit of like this. If yeah. you want them to all be... Perfect, sure. then, yeah, you might have to get in there and poke around a little bit. And then he is decked out in the rest of his full Hellraiser regalia. And, again, it's pretty damn near perfect. If I had to raise a, an issue is that there's just the slightest relief on his chest, which in other of the figures I have is more pronounced. Okay. I couldn't tell you because, because he's wearing black leather or whatever, in a black, dark horror movie, so what is the more screen accurate? Yeah, it almost looks like that detail is maybe embossed into the vinyl. Yeah. It's slightly raised. I don't know exactly how they got that detail on there, but it is very subtle. It's From real. six inches away, you can see yeah, it clearly. I'm sure From across you, the room, I can't see you it. would never know that it's I there. It. I will point out, uh, 
that he does have hooks that go from his collar into his head. Those pop out pretty easy, and the one up here pops out pretty easy. Thankfully, that's another thing I'm kind of terrified is that it's going to tear pleather. But since they pop out, you can pop them out easy, move his head, pop them back in, because there's enough play in the material to get them back in. And if you're Berg and you've always been wondering, what the f*** does Pinhead wear under his skirt? And the only reason I wonder that is because the NECA toys were just a solid flat base. Okay. Like, like a salt shaker. Apparently he wears... You know, motorcycle boots and some black pants. The tailoring on this outfit is just extraordinary. Now this is all fabric that's been that's been stitched yeah. in rows, and wow, that just looks so good. The choice of material that they used here is exactly right. It has a little bit of a, a sheen to it, a little sure. glossiness. Um, but they've also been able to put some paint on it to give it a little bit of a, a weathered, worn-in yeah, appearance. Yeah, you can see it a little bit around his neck. Mm -hmm. I really like the material on the lower half of his outfit yeah, here. I have no idea what that is. It, it's, it's kind of a plastic in the front. Uh, it has sort of a, a fabric back. I would love to see fabric like this on a Darth Vader cape oh, sure. or something like that. My guess is it's probably a very expensive fabric, which is why we don't see it more often. But it drapes well. It holds a shape well. It's opaque. Uh, it, it's 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 the perfect complement. The the outfit is impeccable. I can't imagine that they could have nailed the outfit better than they did. He's got all your basic 12 inch scale figure articulation. He's got ball jointed shoulders. He's got bicep swivel, double jointed elbows. He's got double jointed knees. Waist, you know, ab crunch. He can turn in his waist. He does have a soft plastic piece for his chest which actually the, the flesh moves when you move him, so he can't really bend too much, but he can move. Underneath it all, he has a super articulated body. It's just the slightest bit you know, restricted by his corset, uh, and he doesn't have ankles, so. Well, he might, well, hidden in the boots. Hidden in the boots. And awesome. I think that that's, that's sort of the ongoing curse of the one-sixth scale figure is that because the boots are typically one solid plastic piece, if there is ankle articulation in there, it's not useful. You can swivel, but you can't pivot. You have no tilt, which unfortunately really compromises a lot of the rest of the great articulation he has in his legs. He has all the other points of articulation that you would want for doing deep leg stances, but without that ankle tilt, yeah. I mean, you can kind of fake it, but you're going to have a rigid boot laying sideways. and But that's very typical but of... 12 inch figures. It is, but not many crazy kung fu pinhead fights. He is going to be very hard to pass the one foot test because his foot is sculpted in such a way that his feet do not stand together. He would have a wide stance. So they're, they're tilted. As far as accessories, he comes with uh, everything your pinhead would need. He comes with his three uh, most famous blades, whatever the f this thing is. It also has a great sculpt, great paint job. The little bits are all painted, you know, like the nuts and screws are painted. He's got his stabby McStab, and he's got his curvy McCut Cut. He comes with the Lamont configuration box, which also has all the nooks and crannies sculpted into it. Uh, and then there's even a nice little paint wash on there to bring up details. He comes with five hands, one to grip the box. He can he has two hands that he can hold on top of the boxes, and he comes with his Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth specific Stigmata hands, which also have actual metal bits through them with great paint job again, and the twisted bit of flesh coming out both sides. It just looks awesome. The accessories look great. One of the things that I'm actually a little disappointed about is the box. I think that for the price point, you should get an open box as well. Uh -huh. And I really think that this would have been cool to have done in metal because it would have looked really nice. I mean, th this, this looks good, but to have that nice little metal box, I think, for the price point, again. Uh, sure. Uh, and I also would have loved to have seen these in metal. Sure. I think it would have given him uh, just another nicer look to the figure. Um, another advantage of having his tools in metal is I think that they would drape better on sure. the figure. The hands 
are, are gorgeous. I love these stigmata hands with these like curls of viscera yeah. climbing out over the pin that's covered in gloss red blood. They're just woof. And speaking of pins, if you lose or break a pin, it comes with Wilson's favorite accessory, a bag <laughs> with four extra pins and one of each hook for his head. All right, just so you can get a sense of scale, we got Drax, the Destroyer of Marvel Legends, Rumble, Rumble, uh, Transformers Legends, Marvel Select, Rocket Raccoon, uh, another 1-6 scale, King Zombie. You got it. I recommend picking this guy up. He's awesome. Uh, and you can see that even in the 6 scale world, there's still a little difference in size. Last words, fellas. I will give him a 4 out of 5 hammers. And here's why. I can't think of anything really wrong with him. Like I said, I would have preferred to see some metal in the accessories. I would have preferred to see an open box. But at this price point, unless you are a Hellraiser super fan, then you just don't buy him. Well, how much is it? $250. $250? $250. Okay. Now, if you are a Hellraiser super fan, I think you must buy him. Because I don't know that you're ever going to find a finer piece of Hellraiser toy, statue, whatever. He's amazing, but if you're even a casual Hellraiser fan, you, you just can't. You can't spend $250 on this toy, even though he's beautiful, even though he's amazing. It's just way too much money. No, I mean, he, he's a beautiful toy. He's extremely well made, ticks all the boxes, but that price point is a killer. So that's going to ding it a full hammer for me. Unless you are filthy rich and just love amazing toys, you, you can't. There's no way you could justify $250 unless you're a huge fan. I am going to give him a 4 out of 5 for the exact same reason. He would get a 5 out of 5 if he was priced at a Hot Toys scale, which would have been like $160, $150. At $250 as a Hellraiser nut. Ah! I love him. I think he's great. I have no complaint. My, my only complaints is that his head is fragile, but that just goes with what it is. Yeah. Like, I still have played with him. I played with him probably a little too much. The reason I know his collar will tear is because I did actually start to tear it. <laughs> <laughs> Messing around with it. I love him. I love him. I love him. He's just too much money. But yeah, huge fan. And this is what I wanted, and, you know, once a year I'll take it up the air. Sure. Well, I think that's the good close to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked in the room <laughs> and hear about Bird taking it in the air. So, yeah. if you have any comments, feel free to leave them. All of the Twitter and social media stuff is in the show notes. Like, subscribe, please. You can see up here and up here little places where you can press... Um, and do one of those things, hopefully. Um, in case anyone cares, I would have given him a three and a half. We do not care. No.